I'd love to know what they did to these stages. This is one of the things we don't have. We're assuming that these stages look like these stages, just bigger. I'm not sure. Because both screen rooms that had all these stages in them were gone. Screen rooms there, there was nothing in them. They went to the Amplitron, they put in 600 kilowatts of power, got out uh, 12 megawatts of power. I already went through this. And they provided a signal to the antenna. This is a picture of the power supply. This is the power transformer. If we can focus it a little. Three phase input. Three phase 20 kV coming out here. This thing I'd love to put on Bob's back. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the amplitron, I mean one of the thyrotrons. They use four of these monsters and in parallel. This is a 66 megawatt pulsed thyrotron, a hydrogen thyrotron. The whole thing sits about that tall from the floor. The tube itself is about that big around. They had a cabinet with four of these, you know, boom, 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 hooked up in parallel. We went to the pulse network that Mr. Bielek described. This is the amplitron. Of course, you can see where the welding was done, the cutting to cut the transmitter apart. You can see some welding marks here. This thing, the tube sits from here. You can see the cooling. And it sits right down into about here, inside of an oil bath. The pulse transformer is down in here. As Al said, they already had, yes, they already had uh, capacitor networks. Each network had five capacitors. They had three groups of five capacitors in network, 15 capacitors they used totally. And it was a typical type uh, pulse, you know, pulse delay line, you know, with inductors and series and capacitors to ground. They charged up the caps and then shorted the one end of the line and dumped the other end into the pulse coil. So much for the transmitter. This is a picture of the building this transmitter sat in. This is a 100 foot by 150 foot tall uh, tomb or a monolith from 2001. You can see some of the antenna up there. And this is the two floors. You can see some cooling that the transmitter sat on. They had cooling power standing outside this thing. They had a field of pole pig transformer sitting next to it. They fed this thing with over two megawatts of power. The generators in the power station, they were pumping at least two and a quarter megawatts into this thing. I'd love to know where all the heat went. <laughs> Must have got hot around there. I really remember it was hot. We're now going to discuss the antennas. Can we focus again? The first diagram I made said overall blotch diagram. <laughs> well, I had to fix it. Whoops. Great. I fixed it the block diagram. They had three antennas at Montauk. They had two above ground antennas and the Delta T antenna below ground. What they actually did was they used the reflector to reflect out away from the subject the burning rays, you know, the microwave oven rays. The etheric component, being it doesn't know any solid matter, passed right through the reflector and essentially the etherics went out parallel with the gain horn feed, you know, as the gain horn would send it. They had this big monster wave guy switch to drive either the omnidirectional antenna or the directional antenna. They also sampled the pulse from the final pulse forming network and fed it into the windings of a delta T antenna. What is a delta T antenna? Let's now look over here. This is a delta T antenna. How do you make a delta T antenna? It's easy. You wind a loop diamond shape on X axis. You wind another loop at 90 degrees to it, diamond shape on the Y axis. And you wind a third loop diamond shape around the perimeter of this thing. What does this thing look like? Here up is one pyramid. Here down is another pyramid. This is two pyramids, base to base, one pointing up, one pointing down. You build up a thought form in here with the XY loops. Using the correlated white noise, it will grab the thought form and rotate it. 
that will spin, it will spin it into a cylinder, and as that cylinder is rotating, it has to bend time to get the rotation. It means now you're generating ripples of time coming off this rotating cylinder, and this is a time vortex, as talked of in quantum electrodynamics. So as this thing spins, the imaginary cylinder in here spins, or it's called a spinner in physics, and sends out a field of time waves. All right, let's go back to our picture. And again, they take the output of the noise source from our transmitter, put it into a 100 kilowatt audio amplifier. Boy, I love to have that one, people. But they took that one with them. I would have got that out if I could have. They took that one with them for some reason. That went into the horizontal coil. And the two pulse modulations from the final network went into the X and Y coil. Now, by feeding RF into the omnidirectional antenna and feeding the baseband into this magnetic antenna buried underground, this was the same function that they had on the Eldridge. The Eldridge, remember, had an antenna on the top of the mass and magnetic coils on the base. So this, of course, was much more tighter controlled. Here is a picture of the directional antenna. Here is a picture of the cherry stick on the back, which is the omnidirectional antenna. Can we focus it? see a lot of two-inch coax cables going into this thing. There's a phase array box. There's all sorts of relays in there. I wasn't brave enough to go get those out or to go up here and take this. That's still there. And you can see dipoles. There's three on each side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thirty-six dipoles was in this big cherry stick. Of course, we have a picture of the Delta T antenna for the videotape. Now, we have a demonstration here. This is my own edition of the Montauk system. The CD player or the mind amp source. You can find out information on the mind amp by looking at tapes from the Chicago conference. Or you can get my paper on the BioFist, which explains the mind amp. The quantum correlator is essentially an analog computer that kind of correlates the ones and zeros. It goes to the amplifier chain, drives the XY coil. Then we have a noise source going to the Z amplifier, driving the Z coil. Now, this is very quickly our surplus store. So much for that. Now let's have our demonstration, the fun part. I'd like to have four volunteers from the audience to come up and just sense, get a feeling of what this is doing. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you won't disappear into hyperspace. <laughs> what I have is I have a picture here. I'm not going to show you the picture. I'm going to sit it in the small mine amplifier. This is a quadrature function that goes this way just like the chair is. The output of this goes to the computer. Here's the noise source, goes to the amplifier. The noise source goes to this amplifier, goes to the antenna. What's here is being transmitted here. You all of a sudden may notice, how many people notice like a cooling, a sudden cooling in the room? That's from this. Now, I'd like you people to just essentially close your eyes and tell me where you feel you would be standing right now if you weren't in this room based upon what you're feeling. You're feeling something unusual from this. Everybody in the audience, I think, is beginning to feel the cooling. Okay, man, what, where, where do you think you would be? Staying at a table. You're sleeping at a table there. Okay, sir, what do you... Same place I am right now. Okay, sir? Fresh media is driving in a car somewhere. And you, ma'am? In the field. In the field. What's in the field? Grass. 